What you doing, man? Just doing a little fishing. Is that Cuban roast before a video? <laughs> you damn skivvy. We talked about this. Don't you remember the last video? I don't know what to tell you, bud. Well, as you guys can see, we're not working on a 16-footer. This is Jeff's DLX 17. So, he's got the Mariner 60 horse on there. And when we took the console out, we had to cut the control wiring so that we could take that loose uh, with the shifter on it. And so we got this cable here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow this in here, and oh, oh great, it worked, it reaches the workbench. So I already cut the sheathing off this side here, and we got 12 wires total in that, that bundle. And then we got three over here. So I'm gonna put two different connectors on there so that if he wants to pull this off for any reason, he doesn't have to route the wires out and through everywhere. He could just disconnect it here and do what he has to do. So you can see, you got this thing, you got this, those are tight packed wires. So we're gonna get us a connector out and what we're gonna use is the Deutsch connector because it's perfect for use on anywhere you were gonna have to worry about water. And this kit right here, I got off of Amazon and I used it for everything on my boat, my big boat, the Cobia. Uh, I used it for when I wired up my VHF radio, my actual radio, the, um, uh, the sim rad everything that i've wired up but say like the wash down pump that i installed we had to use a bigger connector so this is for like number 14 stuff this one is for number 12 deutsch uh just number 12 wire so it can carry a little bit more load but what we're gonna find here is let me get this thing opened up and i got this thing i'll link this on amazon or off of uh on the description so we can get the amazon link there so here's a number 12 oh, i'm sorry here's a 12 pin connector and when we get this thing all put together it comes with all of the the pins here so you got the pins well these are all the ones that you crimp there's two different types you can get some that you crimp you can get some that you solder i like the solder stuff but this kit was just easy it was what i needed so i'll solder the ends of the wire and tin them and then i can pinch it in there and then just uh, heat it back up and it'll it'll melt to it. So that way we won't have to any worry about any corrosion or anything like that on the wires. But let me get this thing started and uh, I'll come back and I'll show you all the wires stripped and show you how these things work. So as you can see, we've got our connectors laid out and the trick to this is give it a little spit, spit on it and it'll go right in. Anyways, you can see that it, it if you put it in the right direction, It'll slide right in there and it connects in. Now, these have got these gaskets here so that when you slide that wire in, it's gonna be sealed up against their tight. So, and we've got these pieces here and this orange piece, it goes on there so that it, when you put the pins in from the back and you got your male pin and your female pins, when you put those pins in from the back and then you put this over it, it holds those pins into the exact right location so that when you decide to plug this thing up, that it'll pop right together. So we got our 12 pin, our three pin, all of our pins here. Now on these pins, you see, I mean these things, they are a tight fit. And it takes a little bit to push those in. So you know you're gonna have a really great connection for your power going through there. So you have to have a special set of pliers, which I mean, you don't technically have to, because if you see the pins here, all you have to do is just mash those tabs over onto it but we have these special type pliers here that were made for pushing these connectors now i've used these deutsch connectors on race cars i've used them on my boat i used them on my big boat i've used them on all kinds of projects even on my four-wheeler and they are a waterproof connection i never have to worry about it because of that seal where that wire goes in there and seals that up so I wanted to show you, like you can see where this wire here is, and if you put this thing on here, that top pin, like the top of the pin there, is hollow. So you can slide that up in there with that small wire, right? You get it just lined up just right. So let me try and wiggle this in here. All right. Now the top tabs they are to connect to the wire. The bottom tab 
is actually to wrap around the insulation of the wire so that it kind of bites into that insulation a little bit and holds that thing from being able to come off. Now, you can see it would have worked better if I would have twisted this thing around here before we tried to stick it on. But when you put that on there and you slide that up into that connection and you go ahead and do your back ones first so that it'll hold that thing in place for you and you get those pinched on, when you slide this into that connector, you are not going to have to worry about was it connected, is it a good connection, anything. And I'm going to tin these wires before we, before we put this together just to where I have 100% safe knowing that I'm not going to have any corrosion on that wire where that connection is. So let me get started. I'm going to use the uh, strippers here and I can show you here. I got these strippers 20 years ago and uh, they hang up. They've hung up since they were new, but you know, every time just give her a little tap -a and she'll go away. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and strip all these back and I'm going to get the soldering iron out and I'm going to go ahead and start soldering all these up and we'll come back and I'll show you the, how to put the connector together. Alright, as you can see, we got the uh, we got the pieces here. Let me get this lined up just right. You can see that little tab on that purple wire there. You can see the tab there, you can see that tab there, and you can see how they pinch the insulation of the wire. And then you've got the set the second tab right there that it's pinched on the wire. And you ain't pulling that off there. That is a good strong connection. And I've already tinned all the wires here. You can see. Uh and we have to cut those all off a little bit to be able to match it up because you only need like three sixteenths of an inch or a quarter inch sticking out of wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, try to do it, try to show you one handed, uh, try to show you putting this piece into the connector. And you got a squeezer in there. Let me see if I can block the phone up just right here and uh, show you here. You gotta squeeze this thing in, and when you push it in there, it goes to a point, and you can see it. it's all the way to the front now. You can see it all the way in there. So we're gonna shove the rest of those in, and then don't forget your gasket here. Uh, the three prong ones, I don't know what it is about them. They all the gasket always falls off, but once you put that orange piece in there, it holds it on. So just be careful of those, but. Uh, as for the rest of these, I'll have to trim all those and I'll get those all put in and I'll show you the next connection about sliding the next piece in here in just a minute. Alright, so I got all the wires in there and if you see, all of the, all of the, the terminals are all up to the top. So if you look down in here, you can see where it's got the little tabs there beside the terminals down low. Those are how you remove these so if you want to take your your pick down there and you can reach down in there you can touch that to the side and you can push that out so you could infinitely rewire this uh, however you're wanting to however you're wanting to get your wiring ran so let's just say that you change out that you want to switch a pin at some point you just switch the pin so that way in case you put something in wrong you can get it back out now you take this piece here and it's got this thin blade and that goes down in between all those teeth so that you can get the pins locked in so if that holds that holds all the pins down there on the bottom from being able to to slip out so that's the female version the female side that's all done so we're going to switch over and uh actually what we're going to do first is we're going to try and wiggle this wiggle this uh, uh, heat shrink up and try and just get us nice little glued in right there right at the wires just to where we that way we can say we have that there on the wires it's glued and hopefully hold all those in position and seal this sheathing so I'll get when I get ready to do this side here I've already split it and you can see like you just run a blade around it and if you just tilt it over in each direction then it'll split for you and you can literally just pull this right off. So when we come back, I'll show you that. And I'll actually show you how to crimp the, the little fittings. But you've obviously got the idea that you crimp the little fittings on there, shove them in, make sure they get into the pin position. And then you can put your, your guide on there. So, 
So, as you can see, I started stripping back the boat side, the engine side, and I wanted to show you using the male connector on there. And what I like to do is I like to take the wire and I like to actually shove it up into that pin just a little bit. And uh, that way you can see it. And I take my little pair of pliers and I use this to help it get started, you know? And then I get my crimpers out. And the crimper, it's got that half moon section on there, so it's made to roll these things into the position they're supposed to be in. So let me get this thing on here, make sure my wire's right. And that's crimped right there. Crimped nice and tight. And then you got your bottom here, and the same thing, you just roll those edges over a little bit, stick that thing in there, and those things are, they're in that wire. They are pinched in there tight. Two grown men could pull on that and it ain't coming off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these done on this connector, but before I do that, I wanna show you just to where you can see it here. I got this and all you have to do to be able to shove that in there is literally just shove that thing in there, you know, wiggle her in, wiggle her in, and same thing, it's gonna pop up into there and you'll hear, it, you'll hear it snap in. So, you can see it sticking up through there. So, give that thing a good pull. It's good and set. So, that's not the position that needs to be in, but I figured I'd go ahead and show you all. That way you can see it. And then, like I said, this piece here, it drops down in there, and it holds those tabs back once again. It holds it back on this side, so that we never have to worry about those pins popping loose. Well, if you look here, we got our, our both of our sides. We got, there's the first side, and then here's the, the engine side. So, we'll be able to uh, show you the retainers down in there. You see the green piece? That's the retainer that keeps those pins locked in. And, of course, you know, we already showed the ones for down in there where that keeps it locked in. But, I still got to put the other side on the uh, boat for the three pin. But, we got a new kill switch cable so that we can hook that thing in underneath there and it's got the little switch right there so if you can see that and all it does is just pull that down so you can actually use that you can pull that down and keep people from being able to get in your boat if they do try to jam something in there and, and take it you know a lot of these keys are universal on these so who knows but anyways um, it's more than a one-handed operation to try and put these two together so I'm not even going to try, but one thing I didn't mention is, you see how it's got the relief right there on that corner? Well, it's like an indexing relief. So you got the ones up here on the top side so that you know which way that thing goes in there. And like I said, when you push that thing in, that seal seals so tight, it's very hard to get that thing to connect, like pushed all the way in. So you got to put a little bit of oomph into it, but when you do, you don't ever have to worry about anything getting in there now i gotta do it's dark out but i gotta do the the three pin connector over there on the boat so i'm not gonna record that it's just too dark out there for that to get there but what i did want to show you is i did want to show you that uh we've got all my outdoor outrigger lights here so all my lights i got four of them we lost one uh but i use a deutsch connector you know and i've got little wiring harness is set up to where I can just put my terminals onto little quick terminals there, wing nut terminals, and be able to get the four Optimus hooked up to the lights themselves. Now, these batteries, luckily enough that my company that I work for, they had to change out some fire alarm batteries. Well, these were sitting on the shelf. They were good. They were used, but they had to be replaced because of time. So I was able to get them and you see I've got the connection on there, the the three-pin connection. Let me see if we can see that in there. But anyways, it's got the three-pin connection, and so do my flounder gigging lights. And you see on this one, like I wired it up to where it had two switches, and I can switch each side on so I can have a yellow or a white side. But anyways, I've got these, and these are 18 amp hour each. So that's a 36 amp hour bank, 12 volts. So when I wired them together in parallel, so I've got two of those and these are light enough that I can put into my little cooler backpack and be able to walk and flounder gig at the same time. So anyways, we're going to get out of here and uh, 
And we just want to say that if y'all can like and subscribe and try and comment and just help us out to kind of grow this thing, that would be awesome. And uh, you see we already got that cowl on there. We got that other one. We got a special treat coming.